I don't think any introduction is necessary here. After over five years of waiting, Travis Scott's long-awaited fourth studio album, I think. I, it said fifth on Apple Music, but Days Before Rodeo wasn't an album, and there's no way we're counting that Jack Boys compilation, are we? Or are we counting Quavo Huncho? Nah, this is the fourth Travis Scott studio record. I've personally been a fan since Days Before Rodeo. Back in 2014, Rodeo itself was a life-changing, seminal album for my music taste. I am so hyped right now, I don't even want to talk anymore. Let's get right into this thing! Track number one is called Hyena! The situation we are in at this time Neither a good one to the ends to stargazing that might be his best one yet are you serious ha ah! man i like astral world i do but i never loved it quite as much as other people and my biggest complaint always was that musically that album is next level it's honestly incredible in terms of the musicianship travis's vision the production all that great stuff but travis himself I just did not find him as captivating, as great as a performer as I found him on a Rodeo, or even Birds, okay? Hot take, I think Birds is better than Astroworld. I do like Astroworld again, but I just, I love Birds, and a lot of it, again, I just think Travis himself is better. But that, that right there, that's what I wanted to hear. Travis sounding hungrier than I've heard him in a long-ass time, probably since Rodeo. Man, he, 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 he was fucking rapping on that shit. His voice sounded incredible, so clear, so crisp. That beat... That fucking beat musically. Of course, you had that classic Travis Scott transition at the end that I'm about to hear how it goes into the next track. But the way it opened up too with those weird vocals. Oh, we're in for a treat, aren't we? We're in for a treat. Oh my God, this is better than any song he's released in ages, man. Oh my God. Wow. All right, track two. Let's keep it going. Thank God. I won't doubt it. I won't. He won't mislead all his followers. Brain on the process, mind is spirit, it's living That was a really interesting track there. A few observations. First of all, Travis's voice sounds way clearer, way more in the front of the mix than I've heard maybe ever, but at least since probably Rodeo or Days Before Rodeo era, because I'm in on Astroworld again. I, I like that album, but Travis's voice, a lot of the time, for better or worse, is a lot more in the back of the mix on that album. It's, I don't know, nothing compared to what I'm hearing so far on this project with just the crispness of his voice. It even sounds like he's using a little less effects than usual, and I, I really am digging it. It sounds so clean, so crisp, so hi-fi. As far as that particular song, that was a weird one. I think it's definitely going to be one that... 
you're gonna need more listens to kind of wrap your ears around it because the structure was just so formless and ever-changing that I never got locked in on a particular melody or loop or anything, which is the appeal of it. I really dug that, don't get me wrong, but whereas the first one just had this banging, head nodding beat that immediately had me enraptured all up in it. This one, I was just, I never quite knew what was coming next, so I didn't really know what to do with myself. Is like, is, are the drums gonna drop here? Is it gonna, gonna keep being more ambient sounding? That was a really cool track, but I'm just excited to go back and listen to that one again. Track number three is called Modern Jam. <laughs> Man, I was not expecting this. I'm not gonna lie. You think of the recent material or even just anything Travis has dropped since Astro World. You got Highest in the Room. You got Escape Plan. You got Mafia. You got K-pop. And by the way, a lot of these songs, I really dug. You know, a lot of people hated K-pop or just thought it was boring or whatever. I thought that was a great single. Okay, I love Highest in the Room. I think it's a great trap song. Even Escape Plan is pretty decent. But all of those songs are not remotely like ambitious musically. And I, not even as an insult, because again, I like them, but it's just very standard, formulaic, not really outside of the box music. They're great tunes for what they are, but there's just not a lot of ambition in them. So I was kind of coming into this album thinking that there was a good chance that Travis was just going to try to give us some radio hits. Not to say that there won't be more on here. Like, again, I know K-pop is further down the album. And unlike a lot of people, I'm actually happy to see it on here because I think it's a great jam. A modern jam, you might say. But seriously, I thought this album was going to be just more like butterfly effect type songs, more highest in the room type songs. So far, I've been proven incredibly wrong. This is sounding three tracks in, mind you. We got a lot left to go here. But like some of the most experimental and out there music he's made yet. That one there, definitely some Kanye vibes. I won't lie about that. This whole project so far. But then again, you know, Travis has always had the Kanye influence. But he definitely spins it into his own thing. But oh, shit, 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 shit. Okay, anyways. As I was saying, that was the first song, I feel like maybe since Days Before Rodeo, unless I'm forgetting something, where Travis Scott, I don't think there was any auto-tune at all on his vocals in those verses. Like, he's really showing up here to show us, like, I can do this shit with or without auto-tune, and he's sounding great. Like, I loved how he sounded on that track. Even his flow, though, did give me a little Kanye vibes. Like, I forget the line now, but early in his first verse, he said something about like on the Bible or something. And just the way he said that line made me feel like I was listening to a Kanye song. And even production wise, that kind of gave me like a blend of like mid 2000s and Neptune's production mixed with Yeezus production, like a fusion of that. Cause it was definitely like a little more of a simplistic, just lunchroom banging on the tables, grinding kind of rhythm and beat going on there. But it was also one of those cases where it sounds really simplistic, just what's in your face. But when you really listen to the mix as a whole, there's a lot going on. And of course, as the song went on, there was a lot of progressions. That vocalist who came in near the end sounds so familiar. I wanted to look it up to see who it was, but frankly, I do not have any service out here. So I'm gonna have to just wait and see who that was. I feel like I'm gonna be like, oh fuck. Cause like, it's like right on the tip of my tongue. I mean, such a familiar sounding voice, but we'll have to see who that was. I really dug that. This album is kicking ass so far. Let's go into number, tra let's go into track number four, My Eyes. Smile how I got so deep. Smile how I 
first half of that song i didn't have much of a visual reaction i was just having a moment like that was so beautiful that was stunning like that was just that had me in another plane of existence and then that beat switch to that last part like it was still beautiful in its own sense but it was you know a little harder a little more head nodding but i feel like travis is getting way more personal on this record than he's ever been like, this is the most, at least on first listen, that any of his lyrics have ever really stood out to me as being kind of consequential. Like, I'm so impressed by this so far. Like, even more that, like, I was, I knew I was here for some ragers. Like, that's what I thought I was coming to my car ready to do, just, like, go crazy. But, like, this is really something special, man. Oh, my God. Track number five is called God's Country. Let's, let's see what else he's doing. <laughs> That one's definitely gonna need some more listens, but I think I really dug it. Those very strange la, 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 vocals that he sampled that were chopped and warped so much. And then a lot of the other samples on this song chopped in a similarly screwed and twisted way that just gave this song such a demented, bad acid trip type of feel. Like, definitely a very tangibly unique vibe on that one as far as how the music came together i think i'm gonna dig it like knowing me i have little to no doubt that i will be absolutely full-on loving that a few listens in definitely you know inspiring definitely like wow that's that's creativity on display right there like yeah you know what i'm talking myself into it that was another crazy crazy song i also again like I'm just so, so happy to to hear him being more adventurous vocally, trying to go a little more outside the box, doing different things, giving a lot of variety, you know, the, the very intense, like, I, like that he would punctuate every line with. On the last word of every bar, I just, I need more of that kind of detail. So far, the first five tracks, he's giving me performances that, to me, already blow away anything he did on Astroworld, so... I just hope that continues. Track number six is called Sirens. speechless i don't know if i'm dreaming like to be fully honest with you guys again 
I love Birds, I do. I think it has a lot of his best songs. I think it's so underrated and overhated. I don't understand why. And I do really like Astro World, even though I don't love it as much as other people, but there's still so much creativity on that project. But to be honest, like this, like after I first heard Rodeo, like this is kind of where I thought Travis was going. I mean, not exactly this, obviously, because I could have never predicted exactly what he's doing on here but in the sense of going this wild you know a, a song like piss on my grave like up to this point travis had never re-entered that type of experimental hip-hop territory on either of his last two records like not to say he didn't try new things you know i think of a song like astro thunder that has such a unique sound i think of stop trying to be god sdp interlude you know he's tried some weirder more abstract things but when i talk experimental i'm talking industrial i'm talking all out balls to the wall crazy and so far that's what this record is giving me man i feel like i've been waiting for this for eight years this side of travis to really go full force and so far he's going balls to the wall man so throw those balls right in my face and let's just keep those balls swinging right into the next song meltdown yeah had to be a Drake feature. You, you knew there was gonna be a Drake feature. Teacher, like I got a cup of this shit. Teacher, like golf at a quarter to six. Therapy shit. Yeah, act like you love this American shit. But really, the truth is, you're scared of the six. Yeah, you're scared of the six. Yeah. I pull out a million to stare at the shit. My dick just got hard because a wire just hit. My schedule's out. What? That vote was soaring because I would have been with the Wassers and Paris and shit. Just like Sicko Mode, that was a three-parter. I guess they had to do a two-peat on us, you know, after a song that big. One of the biggest songs of the 2010s in general. Just a colossal song. Makes sense. You knew there was going to be a Drake feature, but maybe I should have predicted another three-parter as well. What I have to say, when Drake first came in, I was digging it. I thought Drake had a lot of really funny lines. I've grown to really love Drake and appreciate him. Like, I may not be the biggest fan in the world of his solo music. I, it has grown on me also, but just Drake as a character, as a lyricist, as a personality. You know, I get a lot more excited for a Drake feature now than I ever used to. The only thing I will say is Drake, as a Canadian, like, nobody is scared of Toronto. <laughs> nobody is scared to go to the Six. I'm just, you know, have your fun. I'm not hating, but... That, that's a little, yeah, that, that's not a thing. But I really liked what he added to the song, but I was thinking in my head, I was like, wow, this is the most kind of just like generic sounding song so far. Like this is what I could have predicted would have been on here. Like this kind of sounds like it could just be on any mainstream trap artist album. And again, you know, I'm a huge trap fan and I'm, I'm not someone who thinks that like Travis is like the only good trap artist. I know there's a lot of Travis Scott fans who like, aren't exactly trap music fans they just think that he's like particularly good at it i'm not one of those i love trap music so i'm not shitting on trap music but i am saying that what he's been doing on this album up to that song was pushing the boundaries of this sound and i mean i don't even think you can call most of what's been on this album so far trap music and then when that started again with the drake verse i was like okay like this is gonna be like the more commercial like normal one and that still has a pretty commercial sound like i'm not saying that's inaccessible but when he really shocked me at the end of drake's verse with those big swelling bassy whatever the hell was going on and then the beat switch happened then i was like oh okay he's still going batshit on this one he just had to throw us for a loop make us think we were getting some more normal ass shit but nah that was another banger he's really seven for seven so far let's go to track eight called fiend Travis 
guys with some weird ass vocal effects. Okay, first of all, I thought that was going to be a Cardi feature because, tell me if I'm wrong, but was that not some Cardi ad-libs? Was that not some Cardi guttural screams there in that track? Was that not some fucking Playboy Cardi? I got teased, but I'll tell you what, I have no fucking idea <laughs> who that actually was on that feature there at the end, but I really dug their sound. I really dug their verse. I'm thinking, was that maybe a Homicide Gang member just because they ended off their verse with homicide homicide and then also it would make sense with cardi being on the same track because they're both on the opium label if it is a homicide gang member uh this is just my time to admit i've never bothered to check out their music um i've just never taken the time to do it so it could not be homicide gang it could be we'll see that's my prediction but if it's not i really don't know who that was but i really dug that that was a friggin synth heavy banger i mean there was almost an overwhelming number of synth layers on that beat like my brain didn't know what to attach itself to but when i kind of just let go of like searching for a main line and started letting the whole thing wash over me it just really started working and i just can't help think listening to this that nothing out there sounds like this you can think of the influences on here you know ones who travis has always had the kanye influence is evident some Kid Cudi influence. I'm hearing, you know, on a track like Sirens, even Modern Jam, you have some like classic rock, psych rock influences. Like there's a lot of influences that you're hearing on this, but the amalgamation so far is, uh, it's, it's crazy unique. And like, that makes me so happy. You don't get too many moments like this in hip hop where one of the biggest artists in the game one of the biggest artists of the last decade drops an album that is this out there and oh i'm just i'm just trying to savor it you know this i was just thinking during like that song that this is one of the the best first listening experiences i've had in a while so let's just keep this thing going track number nine is called del resto echoes <laughs> this sounds like more of those k-pop vibes so far in the next world Yonsei? <laughs> So kind of like the Drake one at first that was sounding just more straight cut, more mainstreamy kind of. And I mean, I, well, I, that's the wrong word to use because this is still a mainstream album, but just more typical structure, typical sound, not too much outside the box going on. But as it progressed, again, just like more weird things kept happening. I think that was Beyonce. I'm like 90% sure. But her vocal performance was the highlight of that track to me. But then also the way that it sounded like her vocals were being simultaneously sampled and used as part of the instrumental. And the way that that was all working, like while she'd be singing and then hearing those samples of her in the background. That usage of Beyonce and what she brought to the track here was very standout. Again, as the track progressed, you get these new layers of synths, the drum programming on that made it stand out the most to me i started realizing like halfway through the song i was like these are really weird like rhythmically the pattern that was going on was not what you would expect given everything else happening on the song it was dancey but spacey at the same time something you could say about a lot of this album so far honestly and i just have to remark again only because i feel like 
he, he just needs his credit. Not that he doesn't get it every day. And I know he has so many sycophantic fans who talk about this every day. But let's just be serious now. Kanye's influence on the music industry as a whole is just crazy. Like, there's so much Kanye in this record. In the best way possible. In the best way possible. I'm not trying to take away from Travis. Everybody has their influences. And what I'm hearing so far, he's putting his own spin on it. Okay, don't get me wrong. But I just hear so much Kanye in this. And... I just think that's a little undeniable. At the halfway point now, track 10 is called I Know, question mark. I would say that was the least remarkable song on the record so far, but it still did a lot of things really well. The production was probably the most low-key and held back so far in the sense that it wasn't throwing beat switches at you, constant progressions, all these bells and whistles and flourishes. That stuff really wasn't going on. This played it more up front. What you start with is pretty much what you get throughout the whole track, but what makes it work is just the attention to detail, right? Like if you strip away just a couple elements out of this beat, it makes makes it feel pretty hollow, pretty nothing burger, really just typical hip hop sounding instrumental. But that bass line, that bass line to me is the glue that just elevates the whole track. It was so grainy and rich and just opened up this cavern around the rest of the instrumental and swallowed it, but ended up gluing the whole track together because of it. And then there were like these 808 cowbells that were just adding new layers of texture to the percussion on this thing. And it's just those little details that elevate what otherwise may have been the first song I found to be pretty mid to a tune I still enjoyed. Track number 11, personally hoping for a little more of a revamp into that crazy balls to the wall type shit on the track, Tobia Twins. Not the jet ski. Yeah! So I wouldn't exactly say that went back to being super adventurous, but it did pick things back up a bit for me after I know. It was a lot harder, a lot more banging. That sample was crazy. I love both the features. 21 probably had my favorite verse on the song. I just, the more time goes on, man, the bigger of a 21 fan I am. I've already been a fan for a while, but he is just so goddamn hilarious. He has so much charisma. It's incredible to me how someone who's that monotone manages to have that much personality when they rap. It's, it's almost mind boggling. And whoever the other feature is, it sounds so familiar. It's another artist who I know when I look at it, it's gonna be like doy, like I know I know who that is, but it's someone that I also like, I don't listen to their solo music. I only know them from features and stuff. So I'm not fully sure who that other verse was, but I really like their performance and I know that I'm gonna be angry at myself later when I look up who that was. Track 12, which I believe is also the name of his film that he had out accompanying this, and that is Circus Maximus. We'll have our final moment. Black skinhead type vibes, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm walking distraction. I'm naturally black and backing up when I'm backing in. My thoughts after that song are kind of the same as they were after the first five seconds of it, which is Black Skinhead. I honestly, that's all I could hear the entire song, and I did enjoy it, but if that is not influenced by Black Skinhead, I don't know what is. The only other thing I'll say is that 
Aside from Drake, the only other artist I knew for a certainty would be on this project is The Weeknd. He's been on each of Travis's records so far. It's a guaranteed classic collaboration, and it was a good one, but black skinhead, guys. Like, let's be real. Black skinhead. Track number 13, Paracel! That was pretty spectacular, man. That was amazing. I'm not gonna lie. My favorite track of the last three or four. That was pretty awesome. I was really in love with that. In a way, kind of gave me like Frank Ocean blonde vibes, but Travis's own take on it, but not nearly in the realm of the Kanye influence on some of these tracks. That's just so obvious, like more just like an adjacent kind of vibe I'm getting, but that was gorgeous. Absolutely love the depth and the richness of the textures on that. The vocal effects on his voice. Never heard him use effects like that before. Yes, they were pretty harsh and muffling and almost dark and deep sounding, but somehow they just made the song even more beautiful. Like, really weird thing going on there, but I loved that. I also think that'll hit even better than it already just did when I'm listening to this as a full, complete album and not stopping after every track to talk about it, but... That was amazing. Love that. Track number 14 is called Schizo. That was really sick. That wasn't as mind-blowing as some of the other tunes on here for me, but it was still a great song, and you saw my reaction. That Young Thug verse made me pretty emotional there, especially because I didn't know it was coming, and I wasn't expecting it, to be honest, but very happy we got it. I thought he killed it. it kind of made me feel how I felt when I heard Metro Spider. You know, it, it's weird. I did like Business is Business, but... You know, knowing all those songs were recorded well before he was in prison and just, you know, going into it, just kind of seeing it more as like a compilation. It just didn't hit the same for some reason as when I heard him on Metro Spider or this where I actually just got like, uh, I don't know, just started feeling kind of sad, but also just happy to be here in a new Young Thug verse. But uh, like there was like four different beat switches <laughs> on that song. A really crazy thing. It was like six minutes long. Definitely kept you engaged the entire time with all those different styles and sounds that it threw in, ending with maybe my favorite of all where Travis was rapping on a more jazzy, soulful sounding kind of beat. But yeah, another great track on the song 15, Lost Forever. Have you ever been lost? Is this someone with West Side Gun and James Blake? Lost on islands, driven in boat cars. Push on about to go up a level of distance. I'm just one chain away from going heavy metal. Baby girl, I think she and a loop. Don't you know you This beat is filthy, man. Oh my god. Don't want to be. She jump up, bounce back like Trevor Lee. This is next level production, man. West Side God! Boo, 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 boo,
is the one. That is the one. Whoa! Yeah! Ah! Oh, I just feel so primal right now. I could run through a brick wall. That beat, that beat was next level. That is some other shit. West Side Gun sounded so good. Oh, when I heard there was a James Blake, Travis Scott, West Side Gun collab, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I was excited because I like all the artists involved, but I did not think it was gonna be that good. Oh my God. I almost hope the next song isn't that great so I can just chill out. It's called Love. <laughs> Give me a break, Travis. We've officially landed in Utopia! I get the love and they give me the dub like I get it, I get it, I get it love They love me, they love me, love me long time Get out of here, man! That and Lost Forever back to back with Schizo even before and par this past four track run. Oh my God, this has me. Ah. I, 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 I thank God the next song is K-pop because I already know it and I just, oh my God, but. Oh my God, that beat, that beat, that beat. The only thing in my head I can remotely think of that is like in the ballpark of that is maybe some of the beats off Big Fish Theory, Vince Staples. But other than that, I've never heard anything like that in my life. That was insane. That was so fire. That was so fire. Ah! Ah! Okay, okay, chill out, chill out, chill out, David. Chill out, chill out. It's okay, it's okay. It's just music. It's just music. It's just music, okay. The next track, which is sadly the third to last, because I could I could listen to about 20 more tracks of this. This could have been a 40 song album. I would have been all the way in. But unfortunately, we're closing in on it, and the next track is one I've already heard multiple times, but we'll play it through <clears throat> just to see how it sounds in the context of the album. And that is K-pop, which unless it's a different version, features Bad Bunny and The Weeknd. Like I said, I'm a big fan of that one, and I'm personally hoping that in the context of this album, more people will appreciate it, because I can't understand why, as his big return single, it may have underwhelmed some of the hardcore fans. Like, oh, it just sounds like an easy ploy for radio play, but my defense of this song is that it doesn't sound like anything else Travis has ever done. The only other song in this vein he's really done on any of his previous albums is Guidance, but the actual sound, even though they're both from similar island dancehall stylings in terms of the influence, the music itself on both are very different. And I just think that production, even though it's more simplistic in structure, is so immersive. The drums in particular on that track are incredibly done, I have to say. They are just so 
funky, so groovy, so deep in sound. And I think in the context of this album, it being a unique sound for Travis is further exemplified. And hopefully when people take it in that context, it'll sound a bit better to them as just another side of what he can do. But maybe I'll end up being the only guy on the planet who thinks this is honestly one of Travis's best singles. Like I'll take this over Butterfly Effect any day of the week. Second to last track now, Telekinesis. Let's go out with a bang here. Another phenomenal track. What do you want me to say? He had the goat of trap music on this. They have built up a pretty solid repertoire. Solitaries first off, 3500, and now this. Travis and Future, when they come together, it's a show. Closing track now, kinda can't believe we're here, but I, I'm just in a little bit of a weird headspace now. Full disclosure, I'm just kinda like tripping out a little bit. Like this has been, like I'm sweating. It's getting steamy in here, it's hot out, and I'm going a little bit crazy. My voice is starting to go a little bit. The throat is feeling sore, so. I I I I, 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 I'm starting to feel a bit loopy. Don't know how to process exactly what's happening. I, I just feel so immersed in what's going on on this record musically, the journey he has me on. Like, it feels weird that I'm about to get off. Uh, but, you know, I can't wait to replay this thing, honestly, especially not being recording and having all the transitions go into each other. But, you know, we'll get into this last track here and I'll give my thoughts, but you guys have seen me. This has been a hell of a record and I'm hoping for a hell of a closer. <laughs> So that was Utopia by Travis Scott. There was so much going on on that album. So many different sounds. You know, I'm just thinking back now to the journey I just went on to be as corny as possible. And, you know, just from where we started to where it ended and everything that happened in between. I'm, I'm kind of just like, you know, it's the one thing like I, I love that. That was an amazing first listen so many so many positive feelings my only question is how will this sound as a whole project will it sound messy like will it sound scattered or will the transitions and the overall flow make it feel like a cohesive body of work my initial impression is leaning towards the latter but again that's a little hard to say when I'm experiencing the album the way I am with pausing it talking about it trying to analyze it a little more than I might naturally when I'm just letting it wash over me. But overall, that was an exhilarating listen. 
the injection of creativity, a breath of fresh air that mainstream hip hop I think really needed right now. Has some obvious Kanye influences, especially Circus Maximus, I think it was, which to me was just copy paste of Black Skinhead. Maybe another one that as I listen to the album more, it'll sound more unique to me. But on first listen, I would say that I know I liked it, didn't exactly blow me away. Topia Twins, I liked it, didn't exactly blow me away. Circus Maximus, same deal. So that three track run, the album was starting to lose me a little bit, but then Parasail, incredible. Schizo, amazing. Lost Forever, love, really picked back up for me. And as long as those three tracks grow on me, this is guaranteed to be one of my favorite albums of the year, even if they don't. Everything else was so strong that I can see this becoming a quick favorite of mine. My initial reaction is that that is at least better than Birds and Astro World. Rodeo is going to be a much tougher cookie to crack for me as that is one of the best albums I've ever heard, I feel like. Um, but I think this has the potential to be that level. I just can't say right now because I've listened to it once. But incredible first impressions. Had an awesome experience listening to that. Honestly, again, I could have listened to another 10 songs. That was so damn cool. Some great surprise features, just like you like to get with him not listing them. Young Thug's appearance was definitely uh, the one that I appreciated the most in that sense. Future as well, but hell of a listen. Travis Scott pushing the boundaries once again. Hoping all you guys find this record as interesting as me, even if you don't like it as much or even if you love it even more. I at least hope you can find it interesting and worth talking about because I think that's one that's going to be interesting to see a wide range of reactions from. So tell me what you guys thought about it down in the comments below. Thank you guys as always for watching and I'll see you next time.